We're at Victoria Mirrors Gallery to see Jules de Balincourt's exhibition of paintings titled after one of the paintings in the show, Itinerant Ones. Itinerant is described in the dictionary as meaning a person who travels from place to place for duty or business. But Balincourt's images, his compositions and the people in them, wander about in body and appear to wander with the inquisitive mind for a myriad of intriguing and different, sometimes tragically imposed reasons. As the accompanying gallery text tells us, Ballincourt is interested in both personal and social depictions of humanity. And we can see that from the start. Look up, and there's a faceless yet wholly recognizable image titled Chelsea, he, she is alone. Displayed separate from the other images, distant and looking down on us. This is Bradley, now Chelsea Manning. And seeing this image triggers a flow of anxious thoughts and connections about surveillance, security, freedom of speech, WikiLeaks, Julian Assange, Edward Snowden, sexual identity, sexual politics, and so on. Then we come down to a dreamlike space, nighttime in a wood. This painting, titled Fire People, shows a gathering of people around a blazing fire. They are, so the gallery text explains, in hope of spiritual enlightenment. Ballincourt's images are often filmic. His celebration of colour draws us in to read the rich and various narratives and open to individual interpretation. So Ballincourt references the spectacle of cinema and the narrative of graphic novels. He also celebrates material exploration. From translucent glowing colours to opaque flat surfaces, stenciled masking and braiding, there's a delight in the material process and a knowing chorus referencing a lineage of paintings and painters through past to present day, Matisse, Doig, Early Hockney, Nolan, Warhol, snippets of Kaifa and Polka. These are sprinkled here and there, dancing round the edges. Ballincourt echoes those other makers and dreamers, yet his vision is his own, clear and strong. There's a new monograph published by Rizzoli accompanying this exhibition. In it, an illuminating conversation between Ballincourt and the American curator and writer Bob Nickas. The conversation gives an interesting insight as to how Ballincourt discovers and builds his paintings. I urge you to read more for yourselves later. Nickas asks Ballincourt, would you say that you're mostly working intuitively, having an idea of a starting point, but rarely discovering the image, the scene, the character or characters in the act of painting? And Ballincourt replies, it's a very intuitive process. I very rarely have a plan, a sketch or an idea. There are existing paintings to respond to. Often I'm working on as many as 10 paintings at once. I see these paintings as separate pages from a book in which each new painting is a response or counterbalance to the prior paintings. I'm creating a loose, free associative narrative of sorts. For me, this also becomes a place of discovery. I like the idea of the road trip with painting, this notion of not knowing where you'll be or what you'll see along the way. I don't want to be following a preconceived map. I want to be free and I want a process to be free. In the current conceptual fine art context in the UK, allowing the intuition to direct the process is often discouraged, even derided. Happily, Ballincourt does not apply such constrictions to his rules of engagement. His process might be called an archaeology of sorts. I suggest his works are neither woolly nor whimsy. He explores and delves into dreams, narratives and previous works and responds with his discovery, building new luminous images for us to inhabit and explore. Ballincourt's exhibition at Victoria Miro takes us from city to sea, from trash man to asylum seeker, reflecting our contemporary world and our various states of being in film, reality, nightmares and dreams. This exploration of process and content gives us a wondrous road trip.